It's time for another Board Recap Podcast. How are you today, Dr. Smith? Very good. It's great fall weather. It is great fall weather. It's certainly a special time of the year, and notice just a few trees starting to change their leaves. So yeah. that, that true fall season is right around the corner. Let's take a look at last night's school board meeting, if you will, and we'll start with good news from last night. So, boy, this was exciting. You were here, Dr. Smith, uh, talking about Ascension, Ascension St. Vincent donating $100,000 to our health sciences program at the Southern Indiana Career and Technical Center. And students got to be a part of it. And if you're watching as opposed to listening and you're seeing these pictures or you saw them on Facebook, great experience for the students to get to be a part of this as well. You bet. And we're so fortunate to live in a community where our area's employers do give back. They do invest in our students, uh, which makes everything in our community better. Definitely. Definitely. So that was, that was great. And then uh, speaking of great, we got to celebrate our September cause for applause, the EVSC's Employee of the Month winner. And this time it was Kiara Butler. She is the assistant principal at Plaza Park International Prep Academy. And besides her regular day-to-day work that she does so well, she really was instrumental in helping Plaza get off to a smooth start this year since their principal, Captain Ernie Griffin, Dr. Griffin, um, was coming back from his overseas National Guard deployment. So always glad to be a part of these celebrations. Yeah, and if you are able to watch, not only listen, the pictures of Kara uh, <laughs> toward the bottom of your screen, I think, are yes, <laughs> pretty much say it all. There is her personality. It's always great when when the school is able to pull off a surprise, and I yeah. think she was kind of caught off guard. Um, but yeah, those are always great thing to be a part of. So we look forward to those each month. Uh, we were happy to. Uh, be able to recognize and lift up some of the celebrations our schools, especially elementary schools, did for local first responders. So, you know, Daniel Wirtz had a program. We were able to post pictures from that online. And then Bogle Elementary Schools, kindergarten and first graders uh, were able to walk to a nearby fire station and, and got to learn from the firefighters. And as I said last night at the board meeting, even got to witness what happens when the alarm goes off because they watched that fire truck leave in about 30 seconds, I believe. And there was not a long goodbye. No, there was no long goodbye. It was, guys, we've got to go. And next thing you know, that truck was moving. So that's a great learning experience for them, but certainly pleased to see our schools lifting up local first responders who are truly our heroes. You bet. Uh, the Lunchbox has reopened, so if you've forgotten about that, that is our, well, I'm just going to call it our restaurant, which it is, <laughs> with Chef Sam, the instructor in our culinary arts program out at the Career and Tech Center. They're open every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They were featured on the uh, news on Channel 14 recently, but uh, what a great learning experience for our students, and this is something that has almost exploded in popularity. It truly has. Uh, every time I'm out there around that period of time, uh, big crowds, but they're able to handle those big crowds, but it continues to grow in popularity. And, uh, there's just one simple reason why great food. It is at a great yes. price. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And they're very fortunate to have a, such an experienced chef and an instructor and in chef Sam, and what a great learning opportunity for them. And then, uh, last but not least, another thing we got to be a part of last week. And, and again, a, a celebration of a community partnership here. And that was uh, our friends at Sabic and their contractors that they utilize really jumped in and partnered with us uh, to do some needed improvements in the chemistry lab and adjoining chemistry classroom at Bossy High School. And boy, that space looked great. Brand new space. So right. certainly very deserving uh, with the students at Bossy High School. And uh, I think they said it really well that it's difficult to imagine careers in chemistry if you don't have that great mm. space to practice chemistry and yes. to learn about chemistry. So Certainly uh, very appreciative of our friends at Sabic. And just like all of our partnerships, when you were there, I was there when we were talking to the folks down from Sabic, they were as proud as anybody walking around that space before we got started. I mean, they truly took ownership and, and it was something they were so pleased to be a part of. Absolutely. And that's not new. Uh, before they were Sabic, they were True. General Electric, uh, still out of Mount Vernon. And uh, when I was blessed to be the principal at Evans, we had a great partnership you did. I remember with the that. folks from GE, and it's great to see that kind of philanthropic uh, effort still alive with the folks at GE and Sabic. Most definitely. And that wraps up good news from last night. So if you want to take us through consent items. Absolutely. We'll dig in at item 3.02, consideration allowance of payments. This time in this two-week period of time, it was $11.6 million, which includes taking money out for health insurance premiums. Even though we are self-insured, we do have uh, health insurance premiums that we take out. Uh, and then this is a little bit larger than we've had in the past because this also includes new pay 
for our cert, for our non-certified employees. In other words, our uh, employees that are considered in the classified classification. So uh, happy to be able to oh absolutely uh, provide those increases for our employees. They are very very deserving. Of well deserved, increases. absolutely. Item three point zero three consideration to prove the resolution permitting the investment of surplus funds for total money. So. This is what we are required to bring to the board every year if we wish to invest surplus funds. So we do that through this resolution. Item 3.04, consideration to approve the renewal agreement with Carver Community Organization. So this has been a long-standing partnership with Culver, uh, with the AARP Experience Corps. They basically provide mentors and tutors for our kiddos. Uh, now in an additional school this year, so we're we're pleased to see even more schools joining in this partnership. But they do a great job uh, with our students and coordination with that bridging literacy program. Uh, so grateful for that partnership and everything that they do to help our students. I feel like we just talk about partnerships all the time lately. What a how blessed are we to be in a community where that is a word that keeps coming up in our conversations. You know, you're absolutely right. And we don't ever want to take that for granted no, because when I talk to not. my colleagues across the state, this is a very, very unique community. Uh, and we're we're really truly agree. blessed to have right. all of the community partnerships. Right. Item 3.05, consideration to approve the representation agreement and resolution for social media class action. Um, so we are growing um, a class action suit in our nation because of uh, the harmful impact that social media can have with our youth. Um, it's, I think, been well documented that mental health uh, among our nation's youth is at an all-time low level. Uh, Many people attribute much of that to social media, and frankly, uh, without getting too far into that class action suit, there are ways to prevent uh, the harmful effects of social media impacting our youth, and unfortunately, I think those folks that are in social media that own those companies have chosen not to protect our youth, so. No, you're you're right. I mean, uh, that is really our hope, is that those social media platforms we use it for the good, and they put controls in that keeps it from having detrimental benefit or detrimental impacts on right. students for sure. So we will see where that goes. Item three point zero six consideration prove buses to be declared a surplus. So we have about twenty buses on this surplus bus list, and any law requires us to have the board approve a resolution and, and identification of the specific buses that would be declared surplus. And this is really after they live their useful life sure. with us. Absolutely. And that takes us then into personnel recommendations. And as I say at this time, those personnel recommendations are there for your perusal. Simply click on the file and you can see all of the personnel action that occurred at the September 18th meeting. And then action items, Dr. Underwood, our Chief Financial, Financial Officer, Assistant Superintendent, for business and HR, had a big role to play last uh, night. He was busy yes. on the Monday's board meeting. He had seven of the eight action items. Many of these were uh, involving the final step of the budgetary process. Item 5.01, public hearing on additional appropriation for the 2023 general obligation bond. So it is required by law that we have a public hearing on uh, that additional appropriation request. Item 5.02 then was the adoption of the additional appropriation and bond resolution for the 2023 general obligation bond. So then the board did um, approve that resolution. Item 5.03 all the way through 5.05. .05. These now are the concluding actions of our budget process for the calendar year of 2024. So 5.03 was the adoption of the school budget. 5.04 was the adoption of the 24 to 26 capital projects plan. And 5.05 .05 was the adoption of the 24 to 28 school replacement plan or the bus replacement plan. I'm sorry. And can we just take a second and, and pause just to reflect on the incredible amount of work and kudos 
to everyone that's involved with that because putting together a budget like this, making sure that um, it is exactly where it needs to be to best support our students is an incredible undertaking. It's about a year-long process, um, and just kudos to everyone who was involved that led up to the board's approval of the budget last night. I couldn't agree more. So uh, this is the concluding act of the approval process that the board has to undertake. So now they will be uploaded, and then they will go to the Department of Government, uh, local Department of Local Government and Finance, Finance, the LGF, and we will then get hopefully our 1782 notice uh, not too long after the fiscal year begins. And then, as you said, the process actually starts all over again in about February, and we start building the budget in 24, February of 24, for the fiscal year of 2025. Then moving on to item 5.06, consideration of the agreement with Confluent Health. This is actually... This is a win. uh, It is a win for our employees, and it's exciting if you need the physical therapy. Uh, right. Hopefully, no one needs physical right. therapy. But, but that if is you something do, that we know right. we have a lot of people that have to use for a variety of different reasons. Yes. If we do, I think this is a great, great opportunity for folks to receive physical therapy without charge to the employee. So, once again, just another benefit for our EVSC employees who are covered under our health insurance. Yes. And speaking of another benefit, you're getting ready to tell us about another one. That was yes. Good 5.07 news. consideration to renew with dental health options by Health Resources Incorporation. So once again, uh, and I think these are very modest increases in the premiums that we have. There's a 3% increase for next year and then guaranteed to be 2% or less in the subsequent year. But EVSC is underwriting and absorbing all those costs. So for our employees, they will not see any increase. And uh, that's because I think we... uh, we're just really blessed to be able to look at health insurance, including dental, uh, in ways that I think that are somewhat unique. And we've only had one premium increase that we've passed along to employees, I believe, in 13 years. I think you're right. And, you know, I mean, obviously, people always talk about salary and wages, and that is certainly of the utmost importance. But boy, when you talk about the benefit package, when you're an organization like we are with 3,400 employees, and um, for those that are eligible for benefits, I mean, just really is a, a vital a huge part of that total compensation package. So it's always energizing to have new employees come in. So at the start of the school year, we have teachers that are new to EVSC, but we also had a very significant Mm -hmm. percentage of individuals where this was not their first teaching job. they were experienced educators joining us. And invariably they say, I cannot believe how Mm benefit-rich my compensation package is. So that's always great to hear, and it's just, I think, confirmation that we do value our employees and they have an incredibly good compensation package. Yes. Okay, now moving on to 5.08, consideration to prove the proceeding with the stadium projects at Inlow Field and Wrights Bowl. Frequent listeners of the podcast will know that just a few years ago, we did approve renovation projects for both of those stadiums that in included uh, putting on a coating on the concrete of those uh, stadiums. And actually, we took great lengths to research. And then while we were uh, in the process of getting that the stadiums prepped for that uh, product, the contractor said, here's another product that we believe is superior to what we had selected. And it was a $60,000 upcharge. We did agree to go with that thinking that it would last for even longer. Uh, Unfortunately, the product has failed, and it has failed in such a way where it's bubbling up and it's disintegrating, but it has become so embedded in the concrete that we cannot remove that product without actually destroying the Yeah, it's not just a simple pressure washing type No, it is for this. Uh, And in fact, the only way to get it up is to uh, use a pressure washer that has uh, such strength that we know it will... Uh, the concrete will not hold up to that kind of pressure. Yeah. And, of course, we're talking about two historic stadiums. Obviously, Wrights Bowl is at Wrights High School. If you're not familiar, Enloe Field is at Bossy High School. Both historic venues. Both incredible venues for yes. high school football in Indiana. So uh, our legal counsel said we need to make certain that the board approves in a public meeting how we're going to proceed with remediating these stadiums. So that's what... Uh, we did on the 18th meeting uh, in terms of approving how we're going to proceed. 
Okay. And okay. Then moving on to yes, information. To information. So 6.01, consideration of updates to policy 3010, criminal history information for applicants as well as contractors, and also policy 3011, criminal history checks for our school employees. So this basically just brings them up to the new Indiana code that was just put in place by the Indiana General Assembly. And then finally, under information, Jackie Barnett presented item 6.02, consideration to prove agreement with Vista Higher Learning. And this is a program that has received quite a bit of acclaim for our uh, students that do not speak English as their primary language. So we are happy to be able to provide that for our students should the board approve that in our upcoming board meeting. Okay. And that wraps up the agenda for last night's school board meeting. As you said at the beginning, beautiful time of the year, fall. And boy, we're right in the middle of all those fun fall uh, athletic activities, as well as marching band. It truly is a great time to be around our schools. You bet it is. Lots of activity, but lots of great activity for students that set them up for a successful life. Most definitely. Well said. And we will talk to you after the next board meeting, Dr. Smith. Sounds great. Thanks.